this mantis nymph has just molted for the first time. That's why it's so translucent. You can see the old skin at the top. And from the looks of it, it's a clean molt. I will be taking them out once he hardens because they need to harden before advancing. At this point, they're very weak. So you'd want to leave them alone. Here are some sheds. And you can see every part of the mantis comes out. It's been a couple of days since that mantis molted. So I moved him to this bigger container. All right now he's up there awaiting food. And the reason why you wanna use different containers for depending on the size of their mantis is for the molt to be successful. Now, I will show an example of a mist molt later in the video. But this small medicine tube, I use it for L1s to L3s. And then these mostly for like L2, L3 nymphs. And then I have the cylinder, which has an L5 mantis. He molted a few days ago. There you can see him. This cylinder is perfect for um, from L4 to L6 is what I've used it for. And then for anything above, so L7 plus, you want to use a bigger area. So if you have in indoor plants, you can put them inside and let them find a spot because the mantis will look for the highest point to molt successfully. Now, in, how can you tell when a mantis is going to molt? Now, this is from my own observation. If you have any other observations, you can let me know. But I noticed that the mantises won't eat. Like you can put the prey in front of them and they will not go after it. They'll just, they'll even strike it just to keep it away. They'll always stay still in a certain spot, like either at the highest point or just upside down. So in these popsicle sticks, they'll normally be like around here. You'll see them right there when they want to molt. That's from my own observation. And then their abdomens begin to swell up. Towards the back, it's gonna start getting a little bit big. And that's when you know that molting is coming soon. Now the reason why mantises go through this process, if you aren't aware, mantises go through incomplete metamorphosis versus that of beetles, butterflies, moths that have a chrysalis or a cocoon or a pupa. The mantis nymphs look exactly like the adults and they'll shed skin multiple times. In the case of Chinese mantises, they go through a total of seven, seven molts seven molds until they're finally adults. So L7 is the last one before they become adults. Now, when they're molting, you don't wanna disturb them. So if you see them, leave them alone, do not open the container, don't do anything to that. Because if you intervene or try to assist, you might make it worse. You only intervene if you absolutely see there's a problem in case the mantis falls while it's performing it's molt. Now for my tip to have a successful molt, molt is to give them nice mists of water in the container so they can drink. The mantis needs a certain amount of humidity in order for it to come out of, it, come out of its old skin. And that's how you avoid any possible mist molts or unfortunate mishaps. Because the, this is the most important part of a mantis's life cycle. It is crucial and you want to do your best to have your little mantis friend become an adult. This is an example of a mantis mist molt. You can tell by his back legs or hind legs. This one isn't fully complete while this one has a little bit of issue. Now if this happens, don't be too alarmed. Just be patient with them. Eventually they'll molt to the next one and they'll regrow their missing limbs or legs. This one just ate, so he's been eating, he's living his life. Just give them a chance and they'll do their best to get back. Back to the L5 Mantis. He was chowing down, but now he's done. Just like this video. If you have any questions regarding molting, leave them down in the comments and I'll get back to you. Again, thank you all for watching this video.